Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Panel. This is episode seven. We are a group of real estate agents from different areas in Ontario who come together every week to discuss hot topics in real estate. I have Mike, Melody, and Devor here with me today. Today we're going to switch it up a little bit and we are going to talk about real estate rules. I just saw recently in the news, a couple came forward to talk about their experience in real estate and it didn't go so well. There was some information leaked about one offer to another agent and they were really upset. And their purpose of sharing this information with the media was to make people informed about their rights and rules that are, that go along with real estate. So we decided today that we would put an episode together for you just to give you a little bit more information about the rules and regulations around a real estate offer and a real estate deal. So as a buyer and a seller, are you, are you aware of how things work? The question is probably not, which is why you hire us as real estate agents. Today, my panel is going to answer some hot topic questions regarding the rules and regulations a quick information session to help you on your buying and your selling journey. So I'm going to start with you, Melody. After you viewed a home and you're ready to make an offer, are you aware of the fine print? Do you know how long your offer will be good for? And are you aware of everything that you're agreeing to? Melody, can you tell us a little bit, of, a little bit more about this stuff? Yes, absolutely, Elise. And for any new viewers to this channel, I am Melody. I'm based in Toronto. I am with Forest Hill Real Estate Inc. in Yorkville in Toronto. So to answer your question, Elise, I will now go over a few very popular terms in real estate. There is the irrevocable date, the closing date, title search, and commission. So I'll start with the first one. What is the irrevocable date? So this is the length of time your offer is good for. Once this day and time passes, your offer is null and void. Next is the closing date, which is also known as the completion date. This is the day that the buyer will take vacant possession of the property. This date cannot fall on a weekend or a holiday. Next is the title search, and also known as the requisition date. So this day is typically two to four weeks before closing. This time allows the lawyer to confirm the property's rightful legal owner and find out if there are any claims or liens or anything registered against title. For instance, it could be an existing mortgage or any existing work orders. And once the search is finished, you will receive a preliminary title report. If there are any issues or problems with the title, you can point them out to the seller. And depending on the exact nature of the issue, you can then decide whether you want to go through with the purchase of the property. You can tell I'm in Toronto because there's sirens going by. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, there's commission. So this is usually paid by the seller but a buyer can also be responsible for paying commission in certain situations. And I just want to give um, one situation that I have heard about. So there's a real estate agent that I know, and she was working with uh, buyers to help them buy a home. So the buyer sent her an MLS listing and said, uh, we love this house, can we see it? So the agent took a look at the listing and noticed the commission details. In the details, it said that some of the commission we paid for by the seller and the buyer. So the agent told the buyers, and said, do you still want to look at the home just in case? And the buyers, after thinking about it, they said, you know what? We're actually okay to pay commission. We would love to see the home. Long story short, they saw the house, loved it, were fine with paying the commission, and they got the house. <laughs> Back to you, Elise. That's awesome, Melody. Thanks for the great example. Um, it's so important for buyers and sellers to be aware of the irrevocable time. I have done up more than one offer in one day on different homes and you can do this. A lot of buyers and sellers, even after going through the process, you could say, you know, what's, how long is your offer good for? A lot of people are going to say, I don't know. It's something very, very, very important that you need to pay attention to the irrevocable is, is right at the top of the agreement. Um, Devor, can you explain a little bit about why timelines are so important in real estate? So what happens if I'm offering on two properties, you know, one at noon and then another one at eight o'clock at night? What happens if I have an offer that's been accepted after that irrevocable time? Well, the, yeah, it's a, it's a, the simplest way to explain this is, uh, well, because timing is everything. Uh, once the irrevocable, irrevocable time passes, 
uh, the offer is null and void. So, I mean, this is a, a legal matter. Uh, there's a time limit that the offer is valid for. Once you pass that, even by a minute, uh, you cannot, I mean, you can accept the offer at that time, it will still be not a void. So no, another offer will have to be uh, drawn up and, uh, and presented uh, if the buyer so chooses. Uh, and then by the same, by the same logic, if you look at the, uh, the conditions, once the offer has been accepted and there's certain conditions within the offer, uh, there is a timeline for those conditions to be fulfilled. Uh, we're talking about condition precedent. So for example, home inspection, financing, and, and that kind of stuff. So in a condition precedent, what happens is you have to notify the seller agent that those conditions have been fulfilled, so the so the offer can so the so so the contract can proceed to a closing. Otherwise, uh, if the uh, if those conditions haven't been fulfilled, then the offer again is null and void, and your buyer tends to uh, get their deposit back. Now there's condition subsequent, which is the opposite of that, which if you notify them. Uh, by the closing date in within the time frame, then the offer is now in void. If you don't notify them, the offer is going to proceed and close at the scheduled time. So the timing is everything and the wording of the contract is everything. Uh, therefore, having uh, a, a, a trained professional at you to hide is really, really crucial in these, uh, in these uh, situations. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Dav. That's great. Yeah. Timelines are everything in real estate. If we accept that offer after the irrevocable time, you don't have an offer to accept anymore. So thanks, Dav. That's great. Um, Mike, we're going to kind of go back to what I talked to and I talked to you guys about in the beginning about that um, story that was in the news. So you have it, you have offer day, you have about eight offers come in, you're the listing agent. You have eight people who just have to have that house. Some offers are just within $100 of one another. Some have bigger deposits. Some have a better closing date. How do you deal with these? Can you let other agents know how close the offers are in hopes of getting a higher price for your client? Well, Elise, thank you for giving me the very controversial question. <laughs> um, and I say, that, I say that in the panels laughing because they know with all the multiple <laughs> offers and bids that are happening, I mean, this has been a real struggle for a lot of buyers out there and the agents that, of course, that are representing them. Um, the listing agent, Elise, um, can and, and quite frankly has to disclose how many offers are put in the home. So anyone that goes through basically a viewing of that house, if offers are then presented, needs to be aware of that. But what they can't do is they can't disclose the amount of those offers. That is an absolute no way, no fly zone. And agents, you know, have to protect their client's best interests. And we're bound, as you guys know, by many, you know, many, many rules. Um, and you know, imagine if you were allowed to disclose or you found out, at least as an example, that, you know, uh, a bid was won and one of the agents knew what the amount was. They outbid by one dollar and they ended up winning the house. And you weren't aware of what that dollar amount was. I mean, not kosher for sure. And you'd have... You know some very upset uh, buyers, and um, and quite frankly, I mean that's a, a rule that um, you know that, that Rico and Revo would would be certainly diving into. Yeah, um, I think Rico would be very upset about that. <laughs> I would think so, and and yeah. you know our our licenses would be if we were representing you know that that client uh, ultimately the seller, um, our licenses would be in question, and that's um, you know something that we all have to be aware of. Um, you know, in these instances, I mean many agents. Uh, we'll ask for um, one offer and your best offer to put forward first. Mm -hmm. and, and you've been in those situations at least, but you've yeah. also been in situations as we all have, where ultimately, you know, it's, it's a close run and you're allowed to come back with a second offer. And, you know, picture yourself as a buyer. I mean, this, it's, it's a pretty challenging spot to be in. How high do you go? Um, you know, you really want that house. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you have to stay within your means. And that's what we guide our clients, clients for. I mean, if we have buyers, we tell them you need to stay within what your numbers are and you need to feel good about that and walk away feeling good about it. And we all know if it isn't that house, it's going to be another house. And that's the thing to keep in mind. I got one more fun fact to share with you, Elise. Um, awesome. I think we're all aware of this, but I don't know if everybody is tuning in does. Um, in New Zealand, um, they have a different approach to how they, uh, you know, kind of avoid these bidding wars. It's an open auction. 
that's how they handle and it's the only place that i know of right now but i mean there's been lots of talk might that become an industry standard elsewhere so you know what an auction's like come in and they post the home up and people that bid and outbid each other everybody knows what they're bidding and um the, the highest bid takes it all so it, got, uh, it helps with the transparency of the whole thing yeah and it, australia does this they've been doing that that's the way they do they sell and buy real estate for 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 years i think uh, marketplace did an episode on that they went into uh, uh australia and uh and and filmed that and compared it to how things were done here which is more more or less behind closed doors but i i, I sorry to interrupt mike i just wanted to add to the uh the disclosure during the bidding process in a multiple offer situation that the the seller agent needs to disclose if there's any bid from within his brokerage because that's a multiple <laughs> offer oh, sorry that's a multiple yeah. representation yeah. Uh, also if any other agent is offering a discount or rebate on their uh, commission because that gives them if that's not disclosed to everybody else that gives them an upper hand as well so i mean there's a lot going on when it comes to disclosure there's a lot of procedure and uh, and we do have to follow it uh, in order for, for for it to remain transparent and remain uh, uh, legit and above board and uh, you know uh, work out for everybody hopefully for our clients. Uh, in this yeah. Sorry, I interrupted. These, no, no that's great. These rules and regulations are put in place to keep everybody safe and to keep everybody happy. We have to, my broker of record always says, you know, we're leveling the playing field. So if you have people that have shown the house, you have an offer come in, you're accepting bully offers or preemptive offers, you have to let everybody know. And that just makes the the playing field level. I took a couple to see a house on the weekend and, you know, they weren't sure if they wanted to offer on it or not. And I said, don't worry now that, you know, my email's in there and that we've seen the property. If an offer comes in, we have to be notified and then I'll notify you. So Rico and Rebo, I mean, they do their best to, you know, keep it fair for everybody. And, and we have to be up to date on all the rules and the regulations. And it is drilled into us when we go to school. And, you know, it's so important for us to relay that information to you. So as anyone, if anyone else doesn't have anything else to add, um, that's it for today's episode. We hope that we gave you some useful information. If you're thinking about buying or selling, you have any questions, reach out to any one of us and we'd be happy to help you. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs>